What a joy, what a joy to be here. What a joy to be in his presence. In this journey of life, I don't think there is anything else more precious than being with the people, with the family of God in his presence. What a privilege, what a treasure we have. Good morning for those of you that are online. Great to have you with us. Um, if it's your first time, first time with us, and you maybe haven't watched online yet, we're going through the series of Deuteronomy. Excuse my accent. Hopefully you will get <laughs> the main bit. <laughs> um, but yeah, as we go through the book of Deuteronomy, it's, it's an Old Testament book that, where God spoke through Moses to his people as they were entering into the promised land. Um, and for us today, I believe sometimes we think, oh, that was Old Testament. What, what is the relevance of it? Can I move this away? I feel like it's on my radar. Um, and I just want to encourage you today. I hope you have no expectations in myself because I will disappoint you. One thing that I have come to appreciate more and more in this journey with the Lord is that it's nothing to do with us. It's all about Him. We come and go. Seasons come and go. He's the everlasting. If you don't mind breathing with me, we are alive. We have received the breath of life. Now the reality is we don't know the day that we're going to give our last breath. And today I want to encourage you to see that we've got a gift. It's not just about the time we are here on earth, but the gift of being alive and therefore know God. The privilege we have more than being alive on itself, more than going through the experience. And so today I'm going to be looking into chapter 6 and 7 of Deuteronomy. And we're going to be dipping in and out of the word. It's, honestly, as I was preparing, I thought, Lord, help me here. <laughs> There's so much truth in it. There's so much that we can learn, that we can grasp. So I pray today that even though it might be nothing new for me and you, for those who have been in this journey for a long time, you might think, there's nothing new. I know all about that. I pray that by the grace of God, by the Holy Spirit, we will feel refreshed and we'll grasp something new. Our hearts will come to life. Deuteronomy. We, in Deuteronomy, we see God in his love acting and saving and rescuing the people of Israel and taking on a, them on a journey into the promised land. Now today we are not captive in the sense of Deuteronomy as they were, in a, they were captive, physically captive. But as we were just singing, I'm no longer a slave. Israel once, they experienced in flesh what it is to be slave. Today, slavery is our in another level. And God, in his goodness and grace, determined to point us to Jesus. In the same way, that same God that delivered the people of Israel long time ago and took them to the promised land, he, in Jesus, incarnated in flesh, he became flesh to deliver me and you and all humanity and to take us into this journey now here, right now, into the promises he has for you right now, but also preparing us into eternity, the ultimate promised land. This morning we're going we to have a moment to, to break bread and have communion. And we cannot, we, we fail to do it as we are 
feasting on God's word. As we refresh our minds, as we remember, I pray that today we're going to be able to grasp once again truly what it meant, Jesus' sacrifice. That in the same way God of the Old Testament, he, he re- delivered his people. In Jesus, we've been delivered. And I fear sometimes we become too familiar with the gospel, too familiar with the truth, to the point that we almost take it for granted. We don't appreciate, we don't value. We may even lose sight of what it means. We were once lost, dead. Today, we, by Jesus, are alive. And that life is not just physical life. It's the life that continues into eternity. That's the hope that we grasp in Jesus. As we prepare our hearts to communion, I want to I wanna just... How, can you for a moment just imagine what it meant to Jesus? Separation. Would you agree with me? Have you ever, some of us sadly have have experienced separation from loved ones? Now I want you to imagine the perfect unison God, three in one, in eternity, suddenly experience complete separation. Jesus himself at the cross, he cried out, God, why have you forsaken me? It was that moment where in his holiness, God the Father could not be united with his Son because of yours and my sin. Mine and your transgression fall upon Jesus. The wrath of God fall upon him, and that complete cut him off. He had to go down, completely separated from that precious unison place of love that he was in heaven. That's the depth of love he has given to you and me. And I want to encourage, Michelle, if we, as a team, we're gonna, we're gonna celebrate this moment. Let's not just have another communion day. Let's consider what the Son of God, the great I am, the creator of the universe, In his goodness, in his grace, he chose to step down. He chose out of love to rescue, to deliver you and me. As we prepare for communion, I want to encourage you, if you are the first time here, this is something we do as followers of Jesus. We believe in him. And when he left, he told us to do this as a part of remembrance, remembering what he has done for us. So if you're visiting us, I want to encourage you, don't feel the pressure. You're welcome to see, to be with us, to, to receive from God's love. But if, it's, if you haven't done that decision in your heart, I want to encourage you, don't feel pressure. Just let it pass by. This is something we do in remembrance, as follower of Jesus, as disciple of Jesus, we do it in remembrance of him. The Connect team will pass around and we'll, we'll pray together. Love. What is love? The Bible says that in, that because he loved, he gave his one and only son.
We're going to pray together. Father, what gift, what kind of love is this that you have poured out your life for us? Holy Spirit, would you help us to see the love with which you have loved us? Jesus, thank you for taking that place that was to be ours. Thank you for stepping down. Thank you for accepting to be separated from the Father so that we could be united with you for eternity. Jesus, we pause in awe and reverence and wonder of your sacrifice. Forgive us when we take it lightly. Forgive us when we don't understand. The Son of God crucified in our place. We honor you, Jesus. We join the angels in heaven, the saints. Be glorified. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for choosing, loving us and giving yourself away. Thank you for looking into us and giving the opportunity of eternal life. Jesus, we take the bread and this juice as a mem- remembering what you have done for us. And we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What is love? We're surrounded by so many ideas of love. The world around us put an emphasis, love is a feeling. But if if love was a feeling, Feelings come and go. If I was to ask you this morning, how do you, how do you feel? That's why our faith is not by feelings, but by the Word of God, by the trust in the Word of God. And this morning, I want to encourage you, as we dip into the Word of God, lay down your feelings. It's not about our feelings. It's about what He is, what He's done and what he forever will be. I was remem- remembering when, when we were getting, preparing to get married, me and Tiago, and I had this song in my heart, and I, uh, it's a bit cheesy. Um, Westlife, <laughs> we sang to it, and I remember how People find it really cheesy, but we loved it. (laughs) He says, it's a place I've never been that feels like home. It's when you give your all and give a little more. I've never been so sure that's where you find love. Now, this is based on feelings. Our God is the everlasting God. And if it was... What certainty could we have if love was based by feelings? I can guarantee you, you, Jesus at the cross, he wasn't feeling excited, happy. He was in pain. 
but for the joy that was ahead of him. For he saw each and every one of us here today. He saw eternity. He endured the cross. The word in Greek for love, spiritual word for, in Greek for love is agape. And that's more than emotion. It is through actions. When God saw the people of Israel, he didn't just feel sorry for them and, and just feel loved and thought, oh, poor them, and, and then that, that's it. He acted on it. He delivered his people from Israel, from Egypt. When Jesus looked at us at the cross, he didn't just, he had compassion. And because of his agape love, he acted on it. Today we're going to be looking on one of the greatest commandments in Deuteronomy. In six, verse 6, 5 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Now, when we re the only way we can love God and understand love is by, by understanding what He means by love. And through the lenses of God, when I was reading this, I thought, Lord, there's no way in our nature, nature human nature, sorry, there's no way. Our instinct is not to give away. We want to receive. That's our in natural instinct, nature. As humans, we are not willing to pour out our lives for others. He gave it all. I want to encourage you this morning. The only way we can love God is because when we realize our eyes are open to the fact that he loved us first. Because he loved us first, we can then, our eyes, our hearts are open and we can love him back. There is a song that describes the dynamic. It says, the more I seek you, the more I, love, I find you, the more I find you, the more I love you. And I, I'm sure for some of us have been in this journey for a long time. Some of us are just in the beginning. And you will agree with me that is the more we seek him, the more we find him, the more we find him, the more we know him, the more we love him. Now the Bible says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be. I want to ask you this question, where is our heart this morning? Where is our treasure? Where are the things that motivate us, that get us up from bed each morning? Now when we look at the people of Israel and the, the whole book of Deuteronomy, is a love story, a love story of grace, redemption, God is time and time again looking to his people. We keep failing. We keep, we're stubborn. We don't listen. We keep failing. But he keeps coming after us, pursuing his people. He's a God of covenant. Covenant. And he will remain faithful to the very end. In pro I want to... When I look into De Deuteronomy, you see the greatest commandment, but out of, it, out of it, you see God's love acting for his people. But he gives instruction in a healthy and good way for a, to allow his people to be fruitful and live in the new land. For you and me, as we enter into this journey of knowing Christ, is a journey and there are some vital key principles here that I want to encourage you and share with you that help us in that journey of loving God, of knowing Him. In verses, six, six, chapter 6, verse 1 and 2 says, These are the commandments, the decrees and law the Lord God direct me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to, Jordan to possess. 
so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commandments that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. What, as I read this, what jumped out of, of the words for me was fear of the Lord. I want to encourage you today, fear of the Lord, reverence. My son loves me, and my daughter loves me, and they keep telling me they love me, but they will keep trying to push boundaries. We are just the same. Now, I was getting quite annoyed and frustrated in my son's reverence of his teacher. He does everything <laughs> for his teacher. <laughs> and I was just suddenly remembering, in the same way that there are rules and boundaries in a school to provide a healthy place for the development of our kids, God in his goodness and grace and love provides self um, safe boundaries and rules and commandments here in Deuteronomy for the people of Israel to enter the new land. And it's the same for us today. He has provided ways to protect us. That's the heart of God. It's not like this nasty guy just wanted to, us to make our lives difficult and boring. It's out of love that he provides these boundaries and rules to protect us and guide us. I want to read in Hebrews says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is consuming fire. I think the danger we can have in our days is that the more we know God as a father, our, the grace of God, we almost forget that he's still the creator of the universe, that he's still the great I am. Let's not forget who he is. May the Spirit of God help us to increase fear. Not fear in the sense of being fearful of him, but reverence of who he is. David said, teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give, him, give me an undivided heart. In our society, we're pulled for so many directions in our days, so many beliefs, so many different things, dividing our heart, our devotion, our soul. Only God can help us to give us an undivided heart. It's interesting in the book of Deuteronomy, here in verse 4, we read, Hear, o Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. I was just puzzle to see that in not only this book alone, but 33 times that it says, here, here, here. And suddenly I thought, don't you feel the frustration sometimes on our, with our own kids, for those that have kids, that we feel like we're talking to the wall? God is here, 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 my people, if you only listen, here. This is an interesting point. If you can hear or listen to someone that you can see, how much harder to listen and hear to someone that you can't see? That's why we need to grow, encourage one another to grow in our hearing and listening to the Lord, to hear his voice. We can think that 40 years is a long time, right? I don't think Tiago would agree with that to me, with me. 40 years can go like that. Now, it did seem for a long time for the people of Israel to go in circles in, it, in the desert. But we all can agree 40 years just go by. So it's important, it's relevant for us to, to question ourselves. How are we investing the time, the time that we are given, these days, our lives, how are we investing?
In Psalm 18, one, I love these verses, it's, it's going back to the same context, the same reality of Israel. Hear my people, and I will warn you, and if, if you would only listen to me, Israel, you shall have no foreign god among you. You shall no worship any god other than me. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. Open wide your mouth and I will feed it, fill it. But my people would not listen to me. Israel would not submit to me. God is a jealous God. Now I was just considering me and Tiago. <laughs> my heart is his, his heart is mine. God in his love, he's jealous. He wants your full devotion, your full heart. His concern for Israel back then and for us today is that our hearts wander away so easily. Idolatry. It might not look like it was back then, but today we still practice idolatry without even realizing it. Kim, Tim Keller put it like this. An idol is anything more important to you than God, anything that absorbs your heart and imagination more than God, anything that you seek to give you what only God can give. I want to encourage you today. Let's search our hearts. Let's allow the Holy Spirit to point out the things that have taken His place, the place that only He can fill in our hearts. As I was going through Deuteronomy, I felt the Word of God is relevant for us today in Deuteronomy because sadly, story repeats itself. The people of Israel back then and us here today our hearts don't want to submit. Our hearts don't want to surrender naturally. But it's the love of God, it's the revelation and understanding of the love of God that naturally make us want to surrender and give it all back to Him because He loved us first. So in this chapter 6, there's so much richness in there, so much. I encourage you to read at home if you have a chance. We see the commandment of loving God, our God with all our hearts, and that is continuously a challenge. You will find all sorts of things trying to get that place and steal your heart from that place of love for the Lord. But also we see God in his love and kindness instructing the people of Israel to fear him, to hear him, to listen, to teach his children. That felt particularly encouraging and challenging at the same time for me. In, six, in verses 7 and 9 it says, Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. It's so vivid, so clear, the emphasis on teaching our kids. And I want to encourage you, we are full of kids in this family. And I want to encourage you, Let's not miss the opportunity God has given us to pass on to the next generation. A study has shown that it's not not the peers, not the media, not Sunday school, not mission trips, not camps. Is the faith of our fa the fathers that, m that have the huge impact on our children. And I want to share with you, I all remember my father waking up when I was going to the loo in the middle of the night, 
finding my father on his knees. He wasn't a perfect man, but I remember that. My mom's bedside stories were all about what God has done in their lives. It wasn't just about Bible stories. It was about what God has done in their lives. So I want to encourage you today, grasp the privilege, the, 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 the blessing we have to impart what God has given us to the next generation. Now, as we move to chapter 7, is chapter 7, it feels like you can almost want to skip it because there are difficult situations. And but it's beautiful. We are reminded that we are a chosen people, set apart. God has set up set us apart. He set his people of Israel apart back then. He set us apart. Now, I love when he says this in verses 7, verses 6 and 7, sorry, on chapter 7. For you are people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasure, his possession. The Lord did not set his affection on you and chose you because you were more numerous than other peoples. For you were the fewest of all peoples, but it was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath he swore to your ancestors that he brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I love the text here. Moses reminds Israel it wasn't nothing to do because of them, of their size, how great nation they were. It was purely because God loved them. Today, you are set apart, you're chosen because he loved you. Now, that's not to say that he doesn't love the whole, he loves the whole world. Jesus at the cross, he gave opportunity to the very two thieves One accepted, one rejected. God's love and heart for you, for me today, and for the whole world is to save, to redeem. He has chosen you. In verse 4, we see that we need to seek context and reality. Back then, Deuteronomy, in Deuteronomy 6 and 7, the people of Israel, they were in a society where they were conquering lands. There were wars. The people of Canaanite, the people of and all the Ites nations, they were not ready for peace. Now, I want to ask you, if you were, we haven't experienced war right here, right now, but at war... You're not in a position. You either fight or you're struck down. Struck down. And these people of Israel, God in his love and protection, he's sending them instructions to destroy. And that can sound harsh. How could God ask to destroy the other nations? And here in verse 4, we see the heart of God. For they will turn your children away from from following me to serve other gods. God's concern here is to protect his people. As parents, wouldn't you do anything to protect your children? We might not be at war right now physical war. But I want to bring out the challenge. We are at spiritual war. Are we aware of the enemies that are trying to kill our faith and our children's faith? Are we being passive?
the, old, the God of the Old Testament can seem contradictory sometimes when reviewing Jesus Christ and all his compassion. But I love what in the book Gentle and Lowly says, a morally perfect human such as Christ would be a contradiction if he didn't get angry. Perhaps we feel that to a degree we emphasize Christ's compassion and we neglect his anger. And to a degree we emphasize his anger and we neglect his compassion. But what we must see is that the two rise and fall together. May the God of peace impart in your heart the powerful truth that you are chosen. That the bits in life that we don't understand, the circumstances that we might cannot make sense sometimes, he sees it all. He sees the bigger picture. We might not understand right now, but I want to encourage you, the God that gave his, own and on, his one and only son, he's worthy of our trust. If anything that you can remember from today, I pray that you remember. We've been given the gift of life. And in this life, we've been given the gift of God's love. And because he loves us first, we can love him. And I want to encourage you, the Bible says that in the last day, the, gro the love of many will grow cold. This is a reality. We wrestle in our lives, in our journeys with God, the tendency to grow cold. And I pray that this morning, as you read Deuteronomy and we see these words, that they are not, they're not coming out of a judgmental God, but a God that loves you, cares for you, And we are not, what are we doing with the treasure we've been given? What are we doing with the glove that we've been given? You might be in a position today questioning God's goodness. You might be struggling to understand God. How can a loving God allow this and that? I want to encourage you today to see the cross. No one has a step down. A all-powerful, mighty God has stepped down from heaven to earth so that you could have eternal life. What are we doing with this gift? Imagine if you knew how much time you had left. How would you invest it? Why to wait to eternity to know God and love Him more? How can we be more active in our daily lives in teaching our kids what we have received from God? How can we encourage one another to grow in our listening to one another and to God. In Isaiah 49, verse 15, 16 says, Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you in the palms of my hands. This is the love by which we've been loved. And I want to encourage you to respond to the love we have received. It's not on your strength. It's not by our strength that we're able to love God. 
is by revelation of his love for us, we therefore cannot but surrender to him. Just like the people of Israel went through all of that and God gave them some important vital instructions, today God is with you in this journey. You are not alone. He hasn't forgotten you. Let's pray. Father.